Hey guys, Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History Inside of Your Aquarium. Today we're going to talk about little white bugs, or at least that's what they appear to be. So you'll see these little guys on your glass from time to time in your aquarium, and they exhibit these jerky motion behaviors. There's one back on the glass, there was one floating that was in focus a moment ago, and in my shrimp tank that's about a week old, I've introduced uh, leaf debris, which has been boiled, and uh, also driftwood, which has also been boiled. Uh, I put the driftwood into a tank that's been established, and I allowed it to get a biofilm on it. Um, and then the rock here has also established a biofilm and some algae in another tank, and so I put that in here for the shrimp to... Uh, get used to. Now the shrimp aren't quite as vivid as normal because it's been dark and uh, they're sensitive to light and they uh, brighten up when the light comes on. So you'll see that happening in this film as well. But what I wanted to talk to you about is uh, when you see these little white bugs um, growing on the side of your aquarium or living on the side of your aquarium and jumping around and twitching, um, let me try to find an example of one we can zoom in on. So right here's one. See if the camera will focus. And you can see that towards the base, it's it's moving around a little erratically. We'll try to hold focus on there. But towards the base, they have these little flagellum or uh, arms that move them. And they could be uh, either copepods or ostracods. Um, and those are all terms that basically mean a uh, little small either crustacean or plankton and they're actually a sign of a healthy and functioning uh, ecosystem and so some people don't want them in their tanks they think they're unsightly um, but they're actually a uh, beneficial creature in that it indicates that you're doing something right in the rest of the tank so We'll try to see if we can catch some of these guppies, babies. So I put I put uh, young guppies in here, a week old, to try to um, keep the population of the uh, the little critters in check. And I'm guessing by the looks of them that they're copepods. Uh, some people call them um, uh, seed shrimp. Uh, but that's kind of just a slang name for um, the ostracod. And there are over 70,000 varieties of them around the world. And so it's hard to know where you picked it up. They are also the uh, strongest creatures in the world for their size. And they're also the fastest. So if you were the size of an ostracod or a copepod, when you see them flick and move, they can move in a split second halfway across your tank. And for their size, for being, you know, a tenth of a millimeter or so, um, that, that would be the equivalent of a human jumping half a mile in about a second or two seconds. So that gives you some indication of how quick they are. Now, some of them, when they're small, are able to even be eaten and digested and then come out alive in fish. The eggs are able to withstand being dried, boiled, or frozen, or even put in the vacuum of space uh, for, they don't know for sure, but at least seven years has been confirmed. In another case, they think in the Museum of uh, Natural History that there was some in a case of other uh, taxidermied animals in which 125 years had passed and water was put on them and they came back to life. Now, there was some question whether that was contaminated or not, but needless to say, they live a very long time and if they can survive out in space and they can survive in your freshwater tank, through boiling, through bleach, um, you're not going to get rid of them completely, most likely. You may get them to go dormant. Now, once you have them in your tank, um, you can always use fish to keep them in check, and that's what I've chosen to do. I found them tonight, and that's why it's good to kind of look at your tank um, in the middle of the night from time to time. But um, 
I've got this leaf litter in here, and I'm wondering if maybe they came in the leaf litter. That would that would make some sense to me. Um, the other thing that I'm going to talk a little bit about right now, and I'll do a whole video on this, but due to the request of a viewer, uh, we're going to talk about uh, it's a collection or colony of organisms, and they're known as Alfux or Afux which I'm not swearing, it's a German word that means um, overpopulated surface or um, surface uh, debris, surface uh, cover. And I'm just zooming in here on various things in the tank for you to look at while I'm talking in case you're bored of my, my, uh, the sound of my voice. So we've got a pregnant uh, really shrimp here. Uh, she's just fanning her eggs. And so those little guys, um, the offux, uh, are algae and bacteria, zooplankton, um, they're also made of, uh, so they've got bacteria, plankton, algae, and there's several other, uh, small organisms that also can join, um, funguses and things like that can, but oftentimes you'll have up to 40 or 50 different creatures living together, and some of the bacteria forms a polymer, a natural polymer, and back here you can see that guppy's picking off the, uh, copepods off the back for me. Thanks, little guy. Uh, these guppies are a week old, so... Um, they shouldn't eat the shrimplets, I'm hoping, and I'll move them when they get bigger in a couple weeks or a week or two. Um, but, so back to the alfux. So, they'll be growing on surfaces, and we, we call them biofilm, and biofilm and alfux are uh, separate and the same in a way. There's d different kinds, but we're going to talk about alfux right now, and once your tank has established itself, uh, bacteria that's floating in the air, um, there's over uh, 1,800 bacteria species just floating through the air in your house at a given time, they've found in studies, and uh, those land, and when you get water or plants, you can have up to 40,000 species of different bacteria and uh, little uh, eukaryotic uh, creatures like protozoa living in your tank as well. And they form together and they make a, kind of like a spit or a secretion that forms a biological polymer. And that polymer then is almost like a gum substance and it starts to cover the entire uh, group of organisms and it's really amazing because that's definitely what's going on on this rock you've got the algae but in with that algae you're gonna have all sorts of other uh, microscopic creatures that we can't see making up a biofilm and it's sticky to the touch or slick or slimy because of those biopolymers and actually they've been talking about using those biopolymers instead of gum uh, like xanthan gum and uh, different types of uh, gum that are used in um, pharmaceutical as well as food products because bacteria grow them very well, um, bac bacteria and algae that is in combination. So you have your free-floating uh, organisms, and I'm just going to say organisms because there's so many different kinds. I mean, there's over a 100,000 when you count the uh, plankton and the... Uh, eukaryotic stuff and the um, copepods and the singular celled things. So talking about all of them, they form together into almost an organism like we are. So you know how you have probiotics in your gut. Um, these biofilms are also your beneficial bacteria in many times. Now they can also be bad in certain cases, but usually they're not if you're doing things right, keeping the pH at proper temperatures, or in proper ranges in the water at proper temperatures. And uh, they actually are able to process ammonia and nitrogen, as you know, from establishing a cycle in your tank, but they also break down waste such as uh, E. coli and other bacteria that can be harmful 
oftentimes they become trapped in these allfucks or colonies of uh, various organisms that make this slimy film, and uh, they get eaten or they don't have room to take hold in, um, you know, coliform bacteria from, from fecal matter and things. And these these colonies actually produce uh, proteins and sugars. And so the shrimp, which are filter feeders, are able then to go through and rip off the the biofilm and the alfux. And uh, that's interesting right there. What just floated past is not good. That is, that looked like possibly a planaria. Um, that was a white, I see a white worm right here. And uh, those are not good for your shrimp tank. Uh, those can easily eat your shrimplets as they get older. But So we'll keep an eye on that. It could be a form of zooplankton. It could be planaria. Planaria and hydra are the two that you really are common that you need to worry about. Uh, and they're both clear and they look like worms uh, sort of. And planaria grow larger and they come uh, and they live in your substrate and they come out at night and they can eat small shrimplets and things. Whereas um, hydra attach themselves usually to a surface and they're almost like a big sea anemone. Um, they're named after the Greek myth of the many-headed beast and they have a bunch of arms which they can reach out and pull in a uh, very teeny uh, fry or baby shrimp um, and other copepods and things. So uh, fish will usually make short work of those. Uh, it's just a balance between how many fish you want in your shrimp tank and how many uh, little organisms you want competing with your shrimp. So Definitely now we're going to keep guppies in this tank because we saw that one little worm-like creature swim by. But the alfox are good in another way in that they there's food and things that shrimp don't eat, and that is what attracts planaria and other nasty little bits of things. And that bacteria will encase it and surround it. And that bacteria comes in free-formed and floating in the air or in the water, and then unites together and starts making that polymer that I talked about. And in many cases, it actually then encapsulates photosynthesizing algae or bacteria and plankton, and it will use that energy together so that they can eat certain um, proteins, they can eat certain other small microorganisms, and they can basically envelop those and rely on one another with a shared... Um, kind of like a a pool or a, a it's like throwing a tarp over the colony of uh, bacteria and then putting them in a substance of their own that's not just water and it's full of nutrients so they even though they're different organisms and you may get 40 or 100 different um, organisms from whole different families of microbes and uh, plankton and uh, protozoa and algae they work together and actually they they cover the the bacteria covers them and then they all share in the nutrients which each species has another uh trick in digesting and using each thing and then the waste of say one of them eats uh shrimp poop. The other one will then take the remnants of the shrimp poop. Good timing. That, sh that shrimp just pooped. Um, we'll take the remnants of that and then maybe turn that into something else like carbon. And so these are uh, copepods and things are actually the major source of carbon or the building bo blocks of life at the bottom of the oceans. They're in the upper atmosphere too. They get carried by the wind like tardigrades. And they have such strong exoskeletons and shells that they um, could be stepped on with a thousand pounds of force and they're not going to be crunched or die. That being said, uh, acids and things can kill them and so they can be digested. But their eggs will lay dormant in your tank and so there's not a good way to get rid of them other than fish, which won't get rid of them completely. 
but it will uh, keep them in check. And you just kind of need to balance what all you want in your tank, good and bad. And I hope I alleviated some fear for you if you had little bugs crawling in your tank and you thought they were going to destroy your fish. Um, everything's going to be okay. It's a sign that your tank is healthy unless you have the planaria or the hydra that I spoke of. So if it's clear and large enough to see, you know, uh, that it's a worm-like creature, then you can start to worry. But other than that, the common ones, uh, they're, they're not going to be harmful. So, um, right there you also saw an off-gassing of some oxygen from a plant. Um, also a good sign. So this, this, uh, biome, this shrimp tank is doing very well. And, uh, I just wanted to go over with that info with you and I'll probably go into more detail in other videos specifically when I do a little more research and, uh, have the accurate info to tell you guys. But for now, uh, if I entertained you, if I informed you, uh, please like, please subscribe. If you stuck with me this long, um, consider maybe uh, checking out my Patreon page uh, or think about it for a while. Let me earn it for, from you guys. If it's entertainment, if it helps you with your fish tank, um, I'm trying to keep the lights on with these fish tanks and uh, buy new interesting creatures and new equipment and things and talk about the history and the science of them, which we can go into also later who discovered these creatures and um, named them and so forth. Some interesting connections and crossovers in the aquarium world. Um, but if you if you feel like I've earned that, then uh, check out the Patreon page. That's a big help to me because the uh, ad revenue is uh, very, very small. We're not here to get rich off of YouTube or, or Patreon for that matter, just to keep doing the hobby and keep bringing you the videos. So, you guys, I hope you take care of your fish and your shrimp and your plants. And most of all, I hope you guys take care of each other and yourself. And uh, have a great night, and I'll talk to you next time. Keep on swimming.